doing this. So my name is Tammy Hennebury. Um, thank you all so much for having me. Thank you for inviting me to do this. I am going to talk to you all a little bit about chaplaincy and what they do for families who are facing a loved one who has dementia. Um, I work in hospice care. I've been in hospice care for about three years and then have an extended background of elder care and things of that nature in addition to that. Uh, just out of curiosity, anytime I'm in a room with lots of people in it, how many of you have have been touched by dementia? Someone in your family has had it, someone that you said so almost everyone. Okay. So dementia, we're going to talk very briefly here about what dementia is, just kind of put a little definition on it so that we all understand what we're talking about here and then what chaplains do to make such a difference in the lives of people facing this. Um, a good definition for dementia, dementia is just the loss of cognitive functioning and it affects your daily living. Um, dementia is kind of an umbrella term. So when you hear the word dementia, I want you to think of it as like this banner and underneath that, are the different types of dementia, okay? There are lots of different ones. Dementia is not a normal part of aging. It's very common. Half of all people over 85 have dementia, but it's not just what happens as you get older. Um, dementia is, is an actual brain disease that we have. Alzheimer's disease, if you look at your banner of dementia here, underneath that one type of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, probably the type that we're most familiar with, right? It's nearly 50% of all dementias. Alzheimer's disease presents with the memory loss that we all think of when we hear the term dementia. It begins with, with memory loss. Um, the changes are very subtle at first, typically begin around age 60 for most people, and then they progress. Um, with Alzheimer's disease, there is treatment available to slow that progression, but nothing to stop it, nothing to cure it. And we know that with Alzheimer's disease, it is a fatal disease. It eventually will get to that cerebral core of the brain that keeps us alive and we'll compromise it. Um, another type of dementia, again, underneath our banner of dementia, we have Alzheimer's disease. We also have something called vascular dementia, which is associated with stroke. I see a couple of you nodding your heads. You know what this is. When a person experiences a stroke, sometimes there are physical symptoms like difficulty swallowing and um, a change in gait in the way that they walk. And then in, in addition to that, there's memory loss. And there is this type of vascular dementia that happens with that. Um, there are some very very difficult types of dementias, not that any of them are terribly easy, but a dementia called Lewy body dementia that has abnormal protein deposits in the brain. And this causes a lot of auditory and visual hallucinations in people that can be very difficult to manage at home. We had talked about, you know, we want to be at home and this is a very challenging thing. And then there's also a type called front temporal dementia. And I mention this anytime I'm around people. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It's nearly 10% of all dementias, but it does not present memory loss until the very end stage. It presents, it affects the frontotemporal cortex of the brain, which is the part of your brain that affects judgment and reasoning and impulse control. Um, someone suffering with frontal temporal dementia has a lot of childlike behaviors and oftentimes becomes very socially inappropriate. Um, for us, this is very near and dear to me is that my father suffers with front temporal dementia and lives with us and we care for him. So it's a very, um, it's only about 10% of all dementias, again, under our dementia banner here, we have Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia and Lewy body dementia and so many more. We could go on and on, but these are four kind of main ones. So for someone affected by dementia, what does this look like for them? What's a typical day look like for them? The first trademark of most of those dementias there is going to be memory loss. And we know that with memory loss, it begins with the most recent events. Oftentimes, if you have someone suffering from take Alzheimer's disease, for example, and you had a big chalkboard and you wrote out their whole life story, starting at the very top, and you just kept writing, Alzheimer's disease is going to come in with an eraser and start right at the bottom and just start erasing lines. So when you're talking to someone with Alzheimer's disease, they may, this is why if you've ever been in a skilled nursing home and you see little ladies with their baby dolls, patting their baby dolls, that's where they are on their chalkboard. They're all the way back to their 20s and they're raising babies and they're often the most meaningful part of their, we just got out of the raising baby phase. I cannot imagine wanting to go back to that, but they say that we will one day. So 
<laughs> yes, yes. Seven, seven year olds and up we're big fans of currently. So there's, um, but when you're talking to someone with Alzheimer's disease, you never know where they're at in that chalkboard, you know? So that's always something to keep in mind with memory loss. Other things often affected, there are so many, um, language is often a very prominent one. You may have difficulty finding words. Uh, they may have difficulty articulating those words. They may be able to find words and articulate words, but they make absolutely no sense. They're in the wrong sequence. Or they're about things that you just have no idea what they're talking about. We call that word salad in the medical field, highly technical term. Sometimes it's orientation. Like we talked about where they're at on that chalkboard, they may not understand what is happening today. They may not know where they are. Um, they may get lost right outside their own home, just not knowing where they are. Sometimes we see that their ability to sequence tasks is compromised, and that's a very difficult thing. We don't realize everything we do requires the ability to sequence tasks. Imagine trying to brush your teeth without taking the cap off the toothpaste. You have to know what to do in order. And so these are some of the things that we see. And one of the most difficult things... Um, that affects daily life for this is personality changes. And this one is so hard for loved ones to take care of. Mom used to be so outgoing, but now as mom becomes very aware of her confusion, she's become very withdrawn and she doesn't, she's nervous to be around people now, just as an example. Um, sometimes they may develop bad habits. We, um, through hospice care, took care of a Presbyterian minister for a long time who started cursing in his Alzheimer's disease, and his sweet little wife did not know what to do with that. <laughs> she could not imagine, you know. Sometimes it's habits that, um, you know, are from an older part of life, and oftentimes it's things that are still them. For instance, my dad has always been the nervous Nelly in our family, and when we leave on a trip, he asks my mom, until she almost kills him, did we lock the door? Did we lock the door? Until finally she says, Thomas, I've told you 15 times we locked the door, you know. He's still that guy. He only asks 30 times now, not 15, you know? So there's still a little bit them sometimes, and that's very difficult for caregivers. So when we're thinking about chaplains, we're thinking about these families, obviously there is a great deal of stress that comes along with caring for someone who has memory loss or who has any type of dementia whatsoever. When we think about chaplains, through my work in hospice, I've seen some of those sacred moments that our last two presenters have talked about with our chaplains and with them. When we go into these rooms or you go into these homes and meet with these families, chaplains bring such an incredible peace and such a wonderful presence. And some of the things that they do when we're talking to our patients, oftentimes they will do my favorite thing that they do, which is always singing with them. They always sing old hymns. Again, if we're looking at our blackboard here and we've erased way back to here, what did you sing when you were 20 and 30 years old growing up in church? It was old hymns. And so our chaplains will start singing and oftentimes we'll see loved ones who haven't connected in any, in any way that makes any sort of sense for a long time but they know all the words to the old rugged cross. And so they start singing and their families see that they're still in there. They get to see that, it's incredible. Another thing that they do is oftentimes they'll offer prayers or rituals that are very familiar to us. Um, when dealing with a patient who has a dementia of some sort, this is not the time to pull out our quotes from Habakkuk or Philemon. This is our time to go back to John 3, 16 and Psalms 23 and the Lord's Prayer and those things that are comforting and familiar to us. Because on that blackboard, again, those things are all still there. One of the very first hospice patients that I met um, after beginning to work in hospice was a little lady who was completely gone to this world. She would ask us all the time, where's my husband? And we would say, honey, he passed away. And she would say, oh gosh, I'm all alone. We'd say, no, you're not all alone. You have us. Let's sing. And she would immediately sing the words to Jesus loves me. It's the only song she remembered. The only one she knew. That's where she was. But she knew that. And so having a chaplain that would come in and would talk to her about those things was just incredible. Another thing that our chaplains do for the patient as well as the loved one is truly being there as that beacon of support for the caregiver. And like we've heard from the other two people, when you are in these moments, these stressful moments, it feels like there's no one there for you. 
at all. They're just coming in and they're giving you bad news or good news or confusing news, things that you don't even understand. But as a chaplain, they're coming in and they're supporting the caregiver. And this is a caregiver who, when helping someone who has dementia, is just typically at their wits end most days. Sometimes they, sometimes they begin the day there. And then they have to progress through it. They have to care for this person. They're often agonizing over many decisions. Um, at some point, mama might get to the point that we can't keep her at home. What then? Where do we go? What do we do? How, how do we afford this? What happens from there? And chaplains are there to be there with them and just truly be that person that says, hey, it's okay. Whatever you have to do here is okay because we have a God who's here with us and he's going to be here through all of this. And it's an incredible thing. Oftentimes, as these caregivers are physically and emotionally drained, they're missing time with their own families. Often they're aging rapidly due to the stress of caregiving. And as chaplains reassure them, they can also kind of help them process this um, by helping them reclaim the personhood of the person that they're taking care of by simply asking them questions like, well, tell me about your mom. What, what did she do for you after school every day? What did she, did she cook anything special for you on your birthday? What was her favorite song? Where did she work? And it helps them remember who that person is because they very well may have been gone for years now mentally. So seeing chaplains be able to bring that personhood back to that family is a truly beautiful thing. Um, I could go on and on and on about so many stories of beautiful things that I've seen chaplains do and so many healing stories and so many ways that they've supported people with dementia. Um, but I just truly, I thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about this. I'm very passionate about dementia and bringing awareness to it and being awareness to all of the wonderful work of chaplains. So if you all have any questions or if any of you are dealing with dementia in your own homes and have any questions about resources or anything, I'll be here afterwards and I would, I'd love to talk to you.